I had a dream. I wanted to play pro sports. That was my dream. And all of a sudden, I got to be about a junior in college. I could jump that high, run that fast. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, I said, what can I do to make a living? I'll coach. Perfect deal. I won't grow up. Joe Gibbs aged quickly when he became head coach of the Washington Redskins in 1981. In his first five games, he suffered five losses. As a guy that is as competitive as you are, what were you thinking driving home at nights after you'd lost your, you know, three games, four games, five games? What was going through your mind? I'll tell you what happens to you become a head coach. I thought that was it. Man, I've reached it. This is great. I, hey, if I don't win, so what? I've had the opportunity. And yet, when you get the job, something else totally different takes place, and that is that you got a lot of people depend on you. And man, when you, that is a tremendous pressure to carry. It was tough on everybody, including Joe. At the time, he made a statement. He says, I may be the first guy to get fired without even winning a football game. I remember Mr. Cook came over there to me one time, and he's, he's sitting there, and he goes, uh, Joe? And I went, yeah, Mr. Cook. He says, you won't believe what they're calling me when we leave that stadium. <laughs> and I said, yes, sir, I will, Mr. Cook, because they're calling me the same thing. During those tough times right there, I think our football team found out about Joe Gibbs because we never wavered in our beliefs. When we did have success, those kids knew that, hey, even when you had adversity, this guy was not going to crumble. That 0-5, I think it actually led to Super Bowls because all those guys that went through that with me, believe me, nobody wanted to go back to that miserable, horrible feeling, you know, at 0-5. And I think it motivated us for a long time. Gibbs finished his first season 8-8. Eight and eight. A year later, he won the Super Bowl. He became the leader of perhaps the most diverse dynasty in NFL history, winning three Super Bowls with three different starting quarterbacks. His personnel changed often. His football philosophy never wavered. We were a simple football team. Everybody says we were basic. Everybody knows what we're going to run. Hey, we're going to run Riggins to the right side. We're going to run Riggins to the left side. We're going to throw the ball to Art Monk. When you're a good football team, you're going to have tendencies because those are plays that you execute well. Uh, Joe's big thing was uh, the shift, the formation how to disguise the play. 19 or 20 guys shifting at one time. I mean, he used to take everybody on the left side, move them to the right side. When we were defending the Redskins, you know, the thing that always would come to mind thinking back was that we shouldn't have a problem this week because they, they only have three or four runs and they only have three or four passes. But the thing that would always happen, it seemed like, is that, that they would execute those three or four plays better than the defense could defend them. The Redskins' most unstoppable play was the counter tray. It combined misdirection with a pulling guard and tackle for gain after huge gain. Despite all his success with so few plays, Gibbs was always willing to adapt, especially when defenses dictated changes in game plans. Lots of times your creations were because of an individual. For us, Lawrence Taylor, the first time we tried to block him a couple of ways that you normally block linebackers, I was standing there looking, all of a sudden Th Theisman got hit and the ball's flying up in the air and he, you know, he, he killed Theisman. And I'm going, what was that? Where was the guard? And all of a sudden we went, my God, you can't block him that way. What are we going to do here? And we said, okay, we're going to take out one back. We'll take a 250 pound tight end and we'll set it in front of him. And that's hence the one back because of Lawrence Taylor. He's a creative genius. You know, that term genius gets thrown around in our game a little bit, but this guy really was. Joe Gibbs knew exactly what he wanted to do when we played football. He knew how many chances he wanted to take. As conservative an individual as he looked with his big old frog eye glasses on the sidelines and his hat and his demeanor of quiet composure, he was a gambler inside. They got their run sequence, and it looks like Rippon hands it to Biner. Option play. He's got Orr wide open at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Gibbs' conservative appearance masked his true nature. He loved to take chances and have fun with both his plays and his players. I used to love players that had character. 
funny guys. Mm -hmm. uh, guys are going to do some characters. Uh, yeah, what, yeah, characters. I used to say, hey, don't bring me any wet diapers, the scouts. <laughs> don't, guys that just lay there. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. I hate it. And people always misread me as being kind of bland myself. Mm -hmm. And they said, Joe just likes certain kinds of guys. Hey, I love the, the, the John Riggins kind of characters. He allowed us to be individuals. He allowed us to keep our personality, maintain our own personality, and be who we are. They rose to new heights with the Smurfs, and even higher ones with the Fun Bunch. And then there was the Diesel, with Gibbs players you just never knew what to expect. At times we had the biggest running back in John Riggins, sometimes we had the smallest in Joe Washington. Got blockers inside the 10, the 5, still on his feet to the 2, leans to the 1, did he make it? Touchdown, Joe Washington! Oh. But of all the Redskins characters, the Hogs became the most stylish. They put players in tuxes, and fans in dresses. In the early 80s, these big and tall men were in vogue, and they fashioned new trends in football. Joe Gibbs was the first guy that went out and used the 300-pound guys on his offensive line. When he built the Hawks to get them that big, power football. Bill Parcells told me that when he went in to be the head coach of the Giants, he said to himself, I got to build a bigger, bigger, better team than Washington because I got to beat Washington to get out of the division to do something else. And now you can see Dallas, same division, got the biggest you ever saw. Joe Gibbs deserves the credit for the, uh, the success that the uh, NFC has had, I think, in the Super Bowls since back in the 80s. They could pound you offensively or defensively. But the key to their success was unity. They weren't uh, the type of team that were, that were so involved in themselves as they were in the success of the club. And that tends to be, I, I think, a reflection of the coach and, and the type of man that he was. He thought, if I could put 47 guys together and, and sell them on one point and make them believe in each other and themselves, I can get more out of 47 average players than I could get out of 30 superstars. He could utilize personnel as well or better than any other coach. He found a system of football that fit the kind of players he had with the Redskins. And any number of those players would have had a very mediocre or lost career somewhere else. So you'd have to say he was the consummate football coach. It's funny, people would brag on you or say, hey, this guy's a smart guy, and you stop and think. <laughs> Gosh, I, all, I, all I wanted to do is, hey, I, I blew a whistle and told people to run faster. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's a great career, isn't it? Every time we got in real trouble, I go, give the ball to John. <laughs> in a dozen seasons with the Redskins, Joe Gibbs averaged nearly 12 wins a year, and he nourished those he coached with a special brand of football. He kept feeding us stuff, and, and he kept making us grow as players. He kept challenging us. He would just try and give us stuff, not expecting us to pick it up, but just to see how far we could go. I love playing for him. God, I love playing for this guy. You know what he made? He made football fun. 